Hey, we're back. We're in Apu's grocery store. Lewis can actually see this now too. Oh, it's amazing. To yeah. Have you? Are you amazed by the whole thing? I kind of yeah. I'm enjoying it though. Um, it's it's epic. Punch Club. Oh, it's a good game. Nine three three. That's our stats. Okay. Day forty one. Yeah, yeah. Holy crap! If we play it that long. We have no money though. That's the problem. So I'm gonna go. You're gonna go by foot to work, and do some drilling. Okay. There you go. Now, drilling like there's no tomorrow. The classic thing about this is that I I kind of don't want to see it now because I'll start talking about the game instead of just wiffle boff. I know it'll make you lazy. You'll stuff. you'll not think of anything fun to talk about, and then you're just gonna be like, whoa, look at his muscles and that drill. Again, oh look, end of day forty one. You're just gonna read things that pop onto your screen every time now. I don't typically have a lot of fun stuff to talk about anyway. A lot of my lot of the chat that we have together well, is kind of I don't know. Don't wiffle. sell yourself short. I mean. I find it a riot, you know? Um, <laughs> no. <clears throat> I mean, I could talk about really mundane things happening. Like, I found some mold in my spare room cupboard, you know, on the wall. So I reported oh, it nice. to the landlord and, you know, it means it probably got a leak. Um, you know, you shouldn't have done that because isn't he kicking you out, like, pretty soon? Well, yeah, but it's pretty important for me to, like, um, not get in trouble when I leave. And him saying, oh, look, there's loads of mold, you didn't report it you're going to lose your deposit. That's always oh. the big fear with renting somewhere, right? That the landlord is going to keep all of your deposit. Um, yeah. I don't know if you're aware of this, people who are out there, but landlords, oh, man. I never want they're to be worst, one. They're the worst, aren't they? Um, no. Because they're, there's ne it's not a good thing to be, right? It's, it's, no. It's always a fat guy with a greasy, like, string vest on. He's always wearing a wife beater. He, yeah, a wife uh, beater. He's always... Right got some sort of accent like maybe he's from russia or something yeah his hairline and... is receding and he's holding a half open can of beer yeah so just imagine me uh i'm a <laughs> landlord and um this is the some kind of accent the... tick half open yeah, can of beer is... tick receding hairline These tick double tick yeah that's yeah, yeah. double tick <laughs> double tick you're right um <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so imagine I'm your landlord. I turn up and I say to you, listen, Buster, you better be reporting damp in the bathroom or guess guess who's going downtown to Chinatown. Um, and then you probably turn around and say, I didn't have a dad and I've always wanted someone to take me to Chinatown for a day out. So that's me. And you raise your hand and you realize, hang on a second. That's not what this guy's talking about at all. And then I beat your ass. No, 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 no. <laughs> In a fight. No, no, you, he ra you raise your hand. And yeah. he realizes it's the same as, as his, his his hands. And you, you realize that he is actually your dad. Your dad. Yeah. He's like, your long lost dad. Oh my God. This guy has the same birthmark on his hand that I have. That's right. That means that we must be either related or maybe soulmates. But maybe being related is closer to the mark yeah you, you kiss for a second and you realize oh maybe we're maybe <laughs> maybe, we're, maybe we're not soulmates yeah just a really friendly kiss though not like a not like a passionate love kiss how do it's you more know like a, that you found a soulmate is it the kiss no i don't you know what i think it is i think you know you found your soulmate when you do that thing where you're like yeah and then i got on the bus and then i and then the person's like slipped and you're like yeah that's exactly what happened. <laughs> you know, you like you complete each other's sentences uh, and yeah. you just have this this ability to like know what the person is thinking, thinking and how they yep. feel and feel. stuff. That's how you know. No, that's, that's how, how you, you know, know you've got a soulmate. soulmate. Yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, well, do you know do you not think it's more of a physical thing, okay? Almost like how um, uh, animals? Uh, uh, animals, you know, a lot of animals sort of relationships are done through smells and pheromones and stuff so, so maybe your soulmate maybe you you like the smell of their farts or something like that i don't know maybe like i don't know can you be attracted to somebody based on the smell of their farts i'm just trying that to find like a like... way to identify the soulmate okay there must be some it pff, there's always this mm. <laughs> are you a huge narcissist if you really love the smell of your own farts and are attracted to yourself based on that on the smell of your own farts. Yeah, that shows that you have a really a big ego. Yeah, probably. No, I don't nice. know. I don't know. I don't think I don't think your own farts are supposed to be unpleasant to you, but they probably I don't know. I don't know. 
Sips, I'm not an evolutionary biologist, okay? I like to pretend no. I'm a polymath at everything. But actually, do you know what yeah. I am? Some people were, were getting mad at me last time, right? Because I was talking about marriage and at stuff you? in a really weird way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're being super cynical about it. I was You're being... Like, oh, you just got married for green card and stuff. And you know what? <laughs> I left my garage <laughs> after that last recording. <laughs> And I broke down on my driveway, which is two steps away from my house. You put and your my fist garage. through the I, through the garage door. I broke down on my driveway. And you said, Why? I dropped down onto my knees. Yeah, I held my arms up in the air, up platoon the style. Yeah, it started raining, and I said, "My whole life is a lie. I married for a green card." And then I realized, no, hang on, actually, Lewis is just like a bit of an angry man, and that's not the case at all. Yeah. Rain stopped. Uh, I instantly dried off and went inside, and I felt good. I'm a f I'm, um, I'm not. Yeah, I suppose I am a bit of a weird guy, and you guys have to. You guys have to understand this, right? <laughs> when I say things, especially in this delude, delude, like deluded, uh, delusional, very yeah. early morning or evening state when we record these things. I mean, it's got to be said, it is really early I, in the morning. I right don't now. really think before I speak for a start and also I kind of think on my feet a little bit I kind of prefer to um put, throw throw stuff out there at you guys and see yeah. what causes the reaction and what sticks so I like to provoke an That's argument it. I like yeah I, I'm very you're, easily you're... swayed okay by other people's arguments I love to hear I love to be convinced by other people um and I, I kind of analyze stuff in a sort of pseudo-scientific way I look at things in a sort of strange way um, so yeah, like, you know, you're a polarizing personality. Soulmates, for example. Okay. Like Jeremy Clarkson. Well, I don't know. He's like Marmite. You either love him or you hate him. I There's think no Jeremy Clarkson. Yeah, okay, guy. sure. Oh my goodness. Sips, you're a monster. You punched the shit out of these guys. I didn't realize. This I know. Poor guy. punched that mustache right wrecked. off his dumb face. Sorry. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, so soulmates are something which is, of course, not true at all and doesn't exist in any kind of way, shape, or form. It's 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 a, it's kind of, um, I think that the, the 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 idea that there's someone out there who's absolutely perfect for you that you once you know sat next to on a bus and then never saw again. You know, you've missed out. You know, I think yeah. is is actually probably about as about as believable as ghosts, right? It's i.e. Yeah. it's totally believable. I believe in ghosts. Interestingly, do you? no, I don't. No. You don't believe in marriage or the nice things about marrying, or you don't believe in soulmates or anything, but you believe in ghosts. I don't believe okay. in, 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 in soulmates. And I think the reason is because the vast majority of people end up marrying or falling in love with people who are in their very small, immediate social circle. Okay. Yeah. Um, very, but it, it used to be that way. I think nowadays. Um, people are exposed to a lot more people through online dating uh, than they were yeah. ever before. If you talk to your parents and things like this, they tended to meet... A lot of people meet at work. A lot of people meet at school. Um, I was going to say that. Do you um, do you ever, like, in your previous jobs and stuff like that, have you ever sort of, like, had that thing where you work at the same place all day, every day, and you see the same people all the time? And slowly over time, yeah, at first when you met these people, you're like, yeah, whatever. You didn't really think much of it or you didn't find this person attractive. But then after like working at the same place for two years, seeing this person all the time, you sort of think like, uh, maybe, you know, maybe they are kind of attractive or something. But like I, it's an artificial thing, isn't it? Because it's it's just because you're used to them and there's like a maybe like something comforting about being used to somebody or something like it's kind of hard to explain, but I think that it's like almost, um, what would you call it? Like, I feel like calling it Stockholm syndrome, but it's, it's not <laughs> that at all. <laughs> it is exactly that, that you're hundred percent right. I used to work at this place and there was a, a, a lady there. I'm not going to say a girl cause she was definitely a middle-aged lady. Yeah. And the first, She's a lady. And the first time I met her, I was uh -huh. like, Oh, she's, scary and terrifying but after i'd worked there for about a year i had this weird crush on her you know i think yeah. sometimes when you get She's to scary know people, and terrifying but she can have sex with me any time that she wants oh. right yeah and so i don't know sometimes that happens to to, to us men I, I don't know if we have any female listeners let us know if that happens uh to you about guys that you never 
would otherwise have been attracted to, but you I get you get I guess you get just why is the paper clip still giving you hints? I'm sorry. I don't know, but I'm we sorry. need to we need to make a decision here. Now that you can actually see the decisions, what would you like to do? Just f take Lewis. him down. He looks like a pathetic guy. You know, don't give him your cash. You've got 336 bucks in your pocket. You've just yeah, you know why? Because we're gonna go buy some workout equipment for our apartment. Yeah, just or our house or whatever. Punch, All right, fine. We're down. gonna sock it to this motherfucker. Yeah. Ready? Yeah, sure. Sorry. We're gonna knock his stupid glasses right off his face well he might do that whoa you see that combo boom oh my god so there is this 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 thing about how you have you can only have a certain amount of friends at any one time uh yeah uh it, i can't remember the number but i think it's about something like 140 or 160 that is the limit uh -huh. of people that you can actually actively maintain a social set of relationships with okay even if yeah. you you know if you if you it, it, there's sort of there's sort of numbers there's sort of studies done which have shown that, that that be the case and it tends to be that your girlfriends and things come from usually either within that circles um your 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 future wife or soulmate or people you know come from within that social circle so that may be your class at school uh plus a couple of people from the other classes plus a couple of your friends from home or or, or your football club or whatever you go to or, or you know the people you know at the pub or whatever and i yeah. think that's a high number for me i don't think i know well, that many people that i maintain good social relationships with i think it's probably more like sort of 60 or 70 for me um what what do you think well i think that like for me it's kind of different because um i um I spend a lot of time in my garage by myself. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, and <laughs> there's... Um, oh, look at this. Deals strength-dependent damage. You like that boxing punch? Yeah, it was, it was fantastic. It. So imagine you signed up to Facebook brand new today, okay? Yeah. And I, I said, yeah. you can only put on people here who, are, who you would actually consider your friends. How many right. would there be on there? <clears throat> um, it could be family too. Obviously, friends are family. So I would say that probably my close sort of network of friends and family. I'd say there's probably about twenty people. Yeah, uh, twenty people. That sounds. I think that's reasonable. That sounds pl like plenty. Yeah. Yeah. But some people. That's a lot of people to keep track of. I mean, the thing is, when you have like a lot of people like that too. Ah oh, shit. We don't want to eat a. Spoon what I'm trying to food. say is that. When I was when I was when I was sort of at school on Facebook and stuff, some people would have like five hundred friends on Facebook, and I was like, yeah. "How have you? How?" I, and I was really oh, that's that moldy burger is not good for you in your fridge. I was like, "How no. do you have that many friends?" And I was really sort of jealous of it, them really. But you you like the maximum according to science you can you can have is about hundred and something. So a hundred and something. Yeah, that sounds like too many. I mean, I would be skull. Uh, it's not skull. Sorry, I would be call screening big time. Screening. I would let all of my phone calls coming in go to voicemail so that I could make sure that the person phoning is somebody I actually want to talk to. Um, <clears throat> I would totally. Uh, do my best to ignore people that I saw on the street with that many friends. It would be just too much. Like, it would just be way too much, I think, personally. That's too many people having some sort of stake in your business. Um, you know what I mean? Like, you don't want to have too many people, do you? Because, like, I think when there's too many people involved, you get into a situation where everybody's got some idea about, like, things you should do and... And it almost turns into like a hundred nags just following you around all the time, doesn't it? <laughs> well, I don't know. Only only if they're all concerned about you. I think sometimes I spoke about this a little bit before on the Christmas live stream when someone sort of was talking in about um, how their family are quite suffocating. And I sort, of, I sort of said, sometimes the people who care about you the most who are the ones who are the most interfering. You know, if people didn't yeah. care... That most people who just want to be your friends like hey have another beer have a smoke you know be my mate yeah. be my friend just you know be they don't mate. they don't care about do these things that are going to kill you they don't Come really on. care Let's about it together you. and that's yeah. you kind of prefer those people as friends you want those people who um yeah. you want they you want them to treat you mean but keep you keen 
Those are the best friends, is what you're trying to say. Some, yes. Okay, that's... Like a pimp. <laughs> you want a friend who's a pimp. Who's gonna just treat you like shit, but for some reason you can't stop loving It's him. a little bit of um, a, a, a... Bumps up against itself in a way. Because as soon as you... When you become more close to people, you start being um, more mean to them, I think. I'm often... Really? I think so. I think I... I think, you know, for example, like I always used to argue with my mum all the time about all sorts of yeah. stuff and it was really because she actually well it, all sorts of stuff was, but it, really for example in reality I, the reason was because she drove the car without any shoes or socks well well for example when i used to live with my family when i came back from university so i was you know a lot of people do this okay when they come back from university they're 22 23 they move back in with their parents because you know they might as well and uh, yeah. it's cheap and they don't have any money at all and they don't have a job and you know i argued a lot with my mum because she she wanted to get me out of the house and she wanted to get me a job and it, it it wasn't it was it was i think it was because she actually knew that it would be good for me um yeah. she could have just said oh you know and a lot of parents do this they're like oh hey look we can just be friends and and you can just stay here as long as you want and that kind of thing I think sometimes makes would have made me quite complacent and I would have sat around and done nothing and I'm sure she would have been willing to do it for a long time but because she actually cared about me she was very mean um, right it's mm, I don't know what I'm trying to say is, you have to sort of, of I think that I think that like it's one of those things I think that people sort of go through a phase in their life where they kind of do need like a, a kick in the butt to like get them going sort of thing yeah like you know you can easily sort of get into a into a bit of a rut where you just don't want to do anything. You just want to sit around and play like WoW all day and like hang out with your friend like on vent and stuff. And then, you know, just casually start recording all of that kind of stuff. Yeah, as well. that can sometimes slip into and a then, real problem. Yeah, it's a slippery slope. And then before you know it, you're just like some like, you know, YouTube sensation. And, you know, you can't <laughs> like... And you're recording You have to like some beat off stuff the women in in the street because they just want to have sex with you every oh time they God. see you and stuff and it's like you know you gotta be careful it's you have to be really careful you have to tough. work hard you gotta listen to your mom brush your teeth every night and every day and um yeah make sure you wear like and clean underpants well in case too. you get hit by a bus uh yeah. let's uh end it here and we will pick up <laughs> yeah. next time where we see will continue to talk about this probably Random guff <laughs> that comes out of her face. <laughs> Goodbye. Bye.